All right, guys, uh, time to talk about the simulation task, which we will uh, deal with using Abacus, of course. So um, what we want to do here uh, is to start with a quite simple hot stamping simulation, or let's call it more thermomechanical coupled simulation. And um, yeah, a typical application is, for example, parts of a um, of the of the white body of a of a car, right? Where you um, nowadays a lot of the sheets are formed um, at elevated temperatures, making use of the hot stamping um, yeah properties or um, the material properties that can be yeah used for increasing the strength of the material when it's been uh, hot stamped. So. But to simplify it a little bit, um, we will consider an axisymmetric problem, um, a sheet. Uh, I've shown here already um, a screenshot of the final assembly of our tag. So this is uh, 100 millimeter as a radius. And we have like these two yeah, geometrical steps in our die so that we have not a super complex shape that we want to generate like it's a, yeah, it's like a bowl, a two-stepped bowl. Um, the die clearance, so the the horizontal distance, um, if the upper and lower die would be in full contact between um, these two edges would be 0.5 millimeter. And the total process duration um, is three seconds from which we will use two seconds of the upper, body, uh, the upper die moving down and actually finish in the forming operation, whereas uh, one second will be the retraction of the upper die releasing the sheet after the forming. We can later extend this and analyze some pretty cool advanced things like consider here um, some additively manufactured cooling channels which are really inside the die, um, which of course will have an effect of the, on the temperature distribution in the die and also the sheet if the die is permanently cooled to a certain degree or let's say the cooling channels are cooled to a certain temperature. Um, and we can also extend this to um, 3D to for example deal with non axisymmetric cases. We will stay axisymmetric in this case but just show you some of the things you need to consider when switching to 3D thermomechanically coupled simulation. Um, Talking a little bit about the materials, so we start with a set of flow curves for the 22 MNB5 um, material at elevated temperatures. So one thing we need to get um, um, straight here is that this simulation will not include any sophisticated um, modeling of the microstructural evolution. So we will not be able to depict the change in mechanical, thermomechanical behavior um, due to the cooling of the, um, of the sheet. So that, that would be a typical um, advantage of very specialized simulation software, like especially Autoform. They can handle uh, what is happening during the stamping process and due to the cooling. So you you start with a um, sheet at a high temperature, so it's fairly soft, and then you rapidly cool it down so it hardens, so it also changes its mechanical behavior drastically. So we have a different set of flow curves implemented, um, usually for the, um, or typically for the um, 22 MNB5 at elevated temperatures, but uh, we wanted to just uh, be clear about this because that of course has an effect uh, on the outcome of the simulation. The dies hardened tool steel, but we talked about this, we will make use of this pseudo rigid um, body approach. So technically, um, we are only interested in the thermal properties of the material of the die, because the mechanical properties are not important, since we will make these things a rigid body, not directly, we'll start out as deformable bodies, but we will turn them into mechanically rigid bodies. So the sheet goes at 600 degrees uh, C um, through a user defined um, yeah, field variable for the initial temperature at the beginning of the step. Um, the ambient temperature is uh, 25 degrees C. Um, so by ambient, we mean like it's um, taking place in an air-like environment. So between, if we go back, 
of course we assume um, the gaps between the dye and the sheet are filled with air and there is nothing else so we don't include any any gases forming during the process like actively or passively so um, we will keep this fairly simple here um, yeah for the interactions uh, we'll take a look at it in detail in the abacus more um, later on but I just wanted to point out so we use the surface to surface contact to get the um, the curvature and especially the pressure distribution in these curved areas pretty um, accurately because um, I hope you remember we will make use of this um, gap and also pressure dependent conductivity so it's really important to get the contact pressure between the die and the sheet right and usually surface to surface um, does this more accurately than no to surface. We can use of course hard contact um, because this overall simulation um, is not super challenging from a numerical point of view because we kept the geometry and many other things fairly simple for this example and also we won't consider um, any friction. Yeah, we could argue that this especially uh, in these um, areas might have an effect. You can just later on play with it and see how it affects your simulation and also um, heat generated by friction. You can take a look at this if you want, but for now we can start very simple. And I always recommend start your forming simulations with no friction, even though if your task is to include friction, always start frictionless because this is one less um, problem um, you need to think about. You have 99 other problems at hand um, that you need to uh, deal with. So don't include the friction right away. Like if you have set up everything else, then as a last step or one of the last steps, turn on the friction and see how this affects your mechanical or in this case, your thermomechanical results. Um, yeah, um, so our sheet is allowed to radiate to um, yeah the surrounding air. So if we would just um, would do nothing and keep the simulation running, it will cool. It would cool down over time slowly, right? However, slowly is like a subjective measure because the surface to volume ratio is fairly high for the sheet. So you, you see guys, we have a large surface area and actually a small volume. So these kind of bodies would cool fairly quickly uh, in terms of, or compared to bulk forming um, yeah, work pieces, which have a lower surface to volume ratio. And yeah, the emissivity coefficient and the ambient temperature um, are specified according to these values. One last thing, and Manish brought us this uh, super high quality picture <laughs> um, <laughs> to, but he talked about this in the, in the theory part, that in this case, in Abacus we can, and actually we will include the gap and pressure dependent um, thermal conductance or conductivity coefficients, whatever you want to call it. So uh, in Abacus, you can decide to use um, either of the two or the, um, both of them combined, which is according to what you see here, uh, of course, the most accurate because both of these aspects take place. But as we talked about in the previous video, I just want to, men I want to mention it once again that if you do not include this increase in your gap conductivity or gap conductance, it's, how do you say, uh, it's kind of Beinbruch, uh, we would say in Deutschen. Uh, so yeah, it's not a neck breaker. And um, so we, we say a leg breaker in German, <laughs> so it's almost the same. So because you see whatever takes place after that at fairly small contact pressures, I would even say, um, is way more important than whatever happens in this um, gap conductivity. And it's just interesting to think about why this increases anyways, right? Because the gases being, so the air being um, compressed a little bit and also it cannot evade or escape as easily. So usually if we go back here and in this case, the air, um, yeah, it heats up and it can escape somewhere, right? So it can transmit the heat somewhere else but in reality if the gap really closes the air um, 
acts as a layer in between the sheet and the die and it it takes up the heat from the sheet and yeah because it cannot really escape so easily it will conduct this heat to the die so that's the reason that the physical explanation why you see this increase here anyways but um, just think about it and as usually abacus will do a linear interpolation between the points and also a linear extrapolation based on the last points you give and um, given the slope of the curve, it's um, yeah fair to say you could you could add a point here at 50 to make it a slope of almost zero. I will I always recommend never give it a slope of zero, but just make it tiny tiny. But um, same we talked about uh, with the flow curves before. Um, or you can just keep it linearly. So Abacus will take the last two points and just linearly extrapolate it which is also fine. All right, guys, uh, time to switch to Abacus and I guess Manish will um, guide us through um, the CAE he has prepared for this video.